Hello everyone and welcome back to the homestead. As you know, I'm building a garage shop right here. I'm kind of standing in the middle. However, obviously I'm not going to get it done this year because it's already starting to get to fall time. But what I will get done is the water line from inside the tent where the well is right now brought up into this area. The electrical line is going to come down along the driveway over into this area and then uh, I'm gonna need some way to keep the water line from freezing because it's gonna come in come up out of the ground and then go right back down into the ground and then over there kind of into the where the overburden is and the trees because I'm gonna clear that little area and build my cabin over there so I'm gonna need to run the water line over there so this area where it comes up out of the ground and goes back down I'm gonna build a small cabin, well, small shed, a four by six shed and put over top of it. And then I can heat that shed and keep the water line from freezing since it's up, up above the ground. So I contacted another YouTuber who's uh, somewhat local to me. His name is Michael and he's, uh, his YouTube channel is called Not So Remote Alaska. Make sure you check him out if you haven't. So right now I'm going to load up my, or hook up my trailer and we're going to run over to his place. Let's see if I can back this thing up correctly. Looks like I don't have to. Well, let's get out and meet him. How's it going? Good. The best thing to do is go to the end. There's a cul-de-sac turnaround. Okay. And then you'll be pointed. You just turn yeah. in this way. But you'll be pointed the right way to get up my driveway. Okay. Well, sure. nice to see you, Michael. Nice to see you. Yep. Yeah, that, I'll be back in a second, I guess. That's what I have to do with my loads of logs. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's go up and see his place. Look at all those logs for the sawmill. Awesome. More logs over here. I was hoping to have this done before you got here. I didn't quite make it. <laughs> nope, it doesn't take too long to get from my place to here. No, not too far. Willow, right? Yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Tell the people uh, what your your channel name and what it's all about. Oh, it's not so remote Alaska, and it's just about what I'm up to today or this week. Um, a little bit of everything and a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do a lot of uh, like grocery store find deals, yeah, and I do. my dollar a day preps are probably the most popular. Right. Thing that people like to watch. And then I'm always in the grocery store and I find deals all the time and I'm, I'm kind of a deal hunter. So right. yeah, I find the, the good deals. And uh, yard sales and yeah, stuff like that. You sales. find some good stuff on yard sales. Yard sales are my, my probably second favorite video to do. Right. I do it all the time. In fact, 
Oh yeah, yeah. This is one of the shirts that I got, and uh, I paid a dollar. A dollar for it. For each shirt, and there was, I got six of them. He probably had ten. I right. wish I would have got them all because <laughs> they were they're well worth it. Right, right. It, we're doing stuff like this. Oh yeah, it's yep. perfect. And you paid a dollar for it, so when once you ruin it, you turn it into rags and. It's no big deal. It's, yep, it's not a big deal, and and that's the other thing I do is. I like to reuse it as much as possible. I right. hate throwing stuff in the garbage. One more use out of it is my my motto. Right. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go ahead, pick this lumber and get it loaded up and I'll catch back up with you guys. As you can see, we're all loaded up here. Uh, this is gonna make a great little shed for me. And years down the road, I think it'll turn into a uh, brooder for chickens eventually so thank you Michael oh, yes. it's been great make sure you guys go and check out his channel not so remote Alaska I'll leave a link in the description so now let's get out of here get back to my place and start building today I'm starting on building the utility shed that will go over all the utilities here I have the water line installed which you saw in a previous video. And also I got the electrical line, which is the black wire laying down over there. And the orange conduit is the internet uh, conduit that they're gonna run the internet through. So since I got everything right here and I need to uh, heat the water lines all winter long. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, build a little utility shed around it that way I can heat the shed the shed is going to be four feet by six feet and that'll be a nice small little shed I can use it for something else in the future but for this next winter it's going to be a little uh, shed over these uh, utilities that'll keep them out of the elements and I can heat it so I'm going to go ahead and start building that and quit wasting daylight the first thing I got to do is get this ground leveled around here as you can see it's not very level there's a hole back there and there's a couple mounds around here and things like that so first thing i'm going to do get it leveled then i can start building the shed around here Today's coming to an end. I got the floor joists all cut out and the uh, end boards marked where the joists will go.
Be there. Oh. Not that. Yeah. Sorry. measure four times cut once or was it measure once and cut three times well <laughs> I totally forgot about the top and bottom plates when I was measuring <laughs> and I measured these exactly eight feet it's one of them end of the day mistakes yeah so now we got to pop the top off and we'll just cut those down with uh, the circular saw and then put the top piece back on so Ain't let's no go ahead and get thing. it done yep it's only a shed, no big deal. I'm not good enough, I need the line yet. Welcome back. It's been a while since I've worked on uh, this little utility shed here. And I did make one uh, decision. I was going to do 8 foot back wall and a 10 foot front wall. But it was just going to be too high. So I'm going to make the back wall be 6 foot and the front wall be 8 foot. So as you can see I cut off, cut off uh, all the studs and everything to 6 feet. Now I got to go around and cut them off two, two inches down so I can put the uh, top plate on. I'm going to go ahead and get that done and then I'll catch back up with you guys here in a little bit. Here's uh, an updated look at the little powerhouse. I am going to uh, fill these in. I'm not going to put any uprights because I'm using a rough cut dimensional lumber, so. But here's what it looks like. So Even though I buried the line for the internet, the guys came out and they could not pull the copper line through the conduit, which was made for fiber. So they got a new crew here today and they're going to trench in a new line right beside the trench that I uh, put in. And by midday or so, I should have internet here on the property, so looking forward to that.
Well, their internet line has been put in. And this is the one that's gonna be activated, Dreckberry Copper. And then they put in a new fiber conduit, same as I had in, but they just put a new one in. It's nice and level under the ground. There's no ups and downs and stuff like that. So that's gonna be the new one coming in. And now you can see what I was talking about with leaving this panel so I can remove it. And in the springtime, when I go to uh, get this ready for concrete, I can just pull this building straight out and set it off to the side. And then I, all my pipes and stuff will just be standing right here. So that's, that's uh, what I was talking about. And I think it's a good game plan. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this panel back in now. I got the panel back on. So now it's good to go until uh, the springtime when I need to remove this uh, shed from around my pipes and stuff. I had a couple minutes this morning, so I went ahead and I put these two triangle pieces on each side. Yes, I know that board's backwards, but it doesn't really matter on this. And then I got this one put on also. So what's left to do is frame in the top of the door. I know this is you're supposed to vent the roof but this is just a little shed it's primarily going to be used one winter and maybe well one winter maybe two i don't know but so i'm going to just uh close off these uh uh areas between the rafters close them off tight i have to uh glue and foam board between all the joists and the studs and everything and on the two gable ends up there I'm gonna glue in two inch foam board and then spray foam around it to make it as uh, uh, airtight as possible. So when I heat it, I'm using the least amount of energy to heat it. I have that to do yet. And then I need to buy a door to put in here yet. So then the building itself will be done. I'm going to put the uh, water expansion tank, the water softener, and the water filters in here also. I was gonna put uh, that stuff in the cabin, but I decided to just go ahead and put it uh, in this building anyways. It's gonna be heated, so I might as well have it out here and that will give me a little, a little bit more room inside the cabin. As you can see, it's fairly tight in here, but I think I'll have enough room for everything. Uh, just a couple days ago, the electricians were here. They wired everything up. They drilled a bunch of holes. So, and I haven't had time to get in here and clean this out yet. So, uh, that's very low priority. So, I'm going to just hold off on it. You can see this is coming along nicely. Uh, we're supposed to be getting snow here in almost a week, five days or so. So, I got a lot of work to do. And uh, the more important stuff, obviously it takes priority so I'm gonna get back to work the shed is all uh, spray foamed in as you can see I got the top part spray foamed I got the bottom of the rafters all spray foamed in I have one piece left to do and it's that cavity right there so I'm gonna go ahead, get that done. Then the only thing left to do in this shed is put a door on. The temperatures are fairly warm today. They're above freezing somewhere, mid upper thirties anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece of foam put in there. And then the only thing I have left to do will be hang the door. So I'll catch right back up with you guys. I got a 32 inch piece that's just a little bit uh, narrower than the studs. I'm gonna stick this piece in all the way up and it pretty much comes to the bottom of the plywood there. And then I got another piece or two that'll fill in the bottom piece. So I got that piece stuck in, now I'm going to stick this one in.
all the foam boards installed. I'm going to give it a few hours to uh, cure up a little bit and for the outside temperature to come up. It's supposed to be in the low 40s, 42, 43, something like that today. So later on today, I'll come back and I'll spray foam around all this and then the, it'll be done except for the door. Since it's so cold out here, it's, I mean, it's not cold, cold. It's upper 30s, maybe 40 now, but it's real cold for this ice and water shield. So what I'm going to do is use a propane torch and heat up the ice and water shield. Let that tar get real sticky and stick to the sheet underneath it. Now, the utility shed is done except for the door and hooking up the water inside. I'll catch back up with you guys when I'm ready to do that. I still have to buy the door, but I got all the components for the water, but that's going to be a different day. I'll catch back up with you guys then.